when the narcissist misses what they had. Guys, take a quick second, like and subscribe, and then comment down below if you agree with this take or you don't, make sure you grab some coffee or tea. Good evening around the world. Thank you for sitting in to the Narcology Morning Show. Cheers. Well, I see all the time, does a narcissist miss me? Because a lot of us can see them with their current person. And of course, something's missing because how can they be happy with this new person? They acted ecstatic with me. I was doing everything right. I was giving them things. They didn't really have to work too hard. And a lot of times we, in our minds, we go back to, did I do something wrong? Don't they miss me? Don't they miss what they had? And the answer to that is yes, but they don't miss you because of what you think they miss you for. If hindsight was, was 2020 was coined after a narcissist, which I'm sure it was after a narcissist who gave his kingdom away because of his childlike emotions and not being able to overcome these childlike emotions, that's what got you discarded. At the time, they can't stand someone mad at them. They can't stand someone not giving them admiration. You were discarded because they can't handle their own emotions. It's nothing that you did wrong. It's God discarding these people for you. Keep in mind, they're operating 100% in their flesh. And that disqualifies people from being in your life. If you have your spirit, God's pulling them out on your behalf. Your flesh doesn't understand it, though. Your flesh is trauma bonded. You know the new kid in town? A song by the Eagles. Just another new kid in town. Well, can you guys remember when a new kid in town came and sat in your classroom? You wanted to get the gnome. You were fantasizing like, this could be my best friend. We kind of like idolize the new kid until we realize he's just like us. He's got flaws just like us. He's not this movie star that comes into our lives. A new kid ends up not being very smart or <laughs> nice, and we don't want to hang around with the new kid. This is how a narcissist operates, guys. They miss what they had when things start going awry with the new supply. They miss what the new supply isn't giving them. But they're like this with everybody. They go back to the harem garage because they're, they're not getting what they're accustomed to getting. That's why they miss what they had with you. But going back to, sorry about that. When they promise forever with you, they did it when they were getting a full tank. They had a full tank of this admiration. But as soon as that gets low, as soon as there's a fight and their current fuel source is mad at them, they can't handle that. Or a healthy person can lick their wounds and see what they can do to better the situation, uh, self-reflect on it, try to change, go and apologize, where a narcissist doesn't want to do that. So what they do is they get on their cheating devices, and when they're, they're fighting with their current, they could be both hands on the wheel, all in with their current fuel source. But that disagreement, that fight, everything changes. Because that admiration is stopped. They, they don't know what to do when the admiration stops. It's like stepping on their arrow. So this is when they start ruminating on past supplies, on uh, re-idolization on someone in the harem garage. And if there's no one in the harem garage, they start fantasizing on an acquaintance they have at the office. And they need that that movie going at all times. They're not like you and I. 
They don't love like us. I don't believe that they are capable of love. They can't get over things. Everything is about admiration. So when that false narrative stops, they have to quickly find that admiration somewhere else. That's who you're dealing with. So you have to look at things in a completely different way. They're operating 100% in the flesh. Now your flesh doesn't get it. Your flesh doesn't understand because it's trauma bonded. It's uh, There's strongholds in your flesh, but your spirit is saying, think back to the relationship. You weren't happy in this relationship. You were unjustifiably treated poorly. There's no justification for how they treated you. That's the truth speaking to you from your spirit. And if you get your flesh on board with your spirit, this is where healing comes in, but you can only do this by going to the throne. Because you do have virtue. They're in crosshairs with everybody on a daily basis. But they're not, you're not hearing from the narcissist. You're lonely because they have both hands on the wheel. They're squeezing their current fuel source to death. And the current fuel source is human. Once that, once they start fighting back saying, hey, I need my space. I need this and that. Uh, I can't be perfect for you. I can't be the one that entertains you on a daily basis. This is where that admiration drops. And when you guys get a Hoover, whether it be a Tesla Hoover or a regular Hoover, that's because they're in crosshairs with the, their current fuel source. And you're just in the harem garage. They're testing you out. They're seeing if they have some backup plans because if this person that they're with continues to not give them the admiration that they need, they're done in two seconds. But they have to have a contingent backup plan. So hang in there. I know you're, I know you're heartbroken. I know you're wishing that they can just focus on everything you did for them. You're as good as your last good deed for a narcissist. That's the true facts, guys. You are the new kid in town. Once they find you out to be human, just like everyone else, doesn't matter if you're a movie star, a billionaire. Think about the billionaire that we just heard of uh, in the news with a certain female. It doesn't matter. You're not good enough for a narcissist. You have to live for them. You have to give them admiration. You have to celebrate the fact that you're a billionaire and praise them every day if you are a billionaire. (laughs) What I'm saying is you can never make them happy. And so when they come back to Hoover you, they're going to try to do that when you're still missing them. When you're, when you're gaping still, because you haven't gone to the throne, let God pull out these strongholds. And this is why I have this channel. This is why you wanted me to come back to narcology. It's like, Dave, they need you. Speak the truth. They're not getting the truth out there. They're getting shop talk from universities and, and, and people who went through graduate school and God bless them, the clinicians out there. But only God can clear out your strongholds. So you get on board with your spirit man. Your spirit man is the truth. Keep this in mind, God. I hope this helps somebody. So yeah, so just know that God pulled this person out of your life. They disqualify themselves to you. Know this. This will help you. They're not able to withstand your fire. You're lit up in the spirit realm. They're not. They're empty inside. They need physicality. They need physical attributes like sex and people that slave for them to be happy. And that's still not enough. That still doesn't make them happy. They become sex addicts. They always have that void burning inside them, guys. 
And I want you guys to have the truth. This is the truth. And I hope this helps somebody out there. Oh, we do have a comment that I would like to read. And I'm going to read these uh, every Thursday. Um, but this is a this is a comment from Glitch. And uh, she donated on PayPal. If you guys ever have any questions you want to ask me that you want others, this, this is in front of 15,000 people. So your question will help many or statement on what you're going through. This is from Glitch. Found out that my ex-narcissist, ex-girlfriend died before I came along. The Holy Spirit kept ministering to me. If I continued on with the narc, I would end up dead, just like the one before me. The Holy Spirit gave me an insight on what happened to the ex-girlfriend of the narc I was with. The Holy Spirit said in my spirit that the ex-girlfriend's energy was sucked out by demonic spirits, and she didn't have the power of Jesus to fight with spiritual warfare, excuse me, spiritual warfare like me. I asked my ex-narc how his ex-girlfriend died, and he told me he doesn't know. Her stomach and feet started to swell, he says, and she ended up in the hospital. Then while there, caught COVID and died. Guys, let me just say this. When you're unequally yoked, and thank you for that comment, Clinton. Thank you for that donation. When you're unequally yoked, the laws of the first and second heaven uh, being unequally yoked, they're bringing in all sorts of, of furries, I call them, that uh, are established through the principalities, signed you. So if you have the light in you and you're doing everything right, your counterpart is letting in, is watching horror movies every single day and watching uh, marathon porn every day uh, and cheating and, you know, the antics of a narcissist. You're bringing in things and they like to get in through other people. This is why it's so good to watch out who you surround yourselves with. And if you yoke to someone who is bringing in these little furries, these principalities, these demons, then they attack your, your system. You got to learn to take authority and glitch. You know, you can take authority over this. So every morning, uh, it's clear out your, your body and your house. Every time you guys wake up, bind the evilness, the unclean spirits in the name of Jesus and rebuke them out of your house and out of your body because they, they start establishing these more strongholds and they like to attack through uh, sickness and disease. So this is real, guys, whether you believe it or not, this is absolutely real. And I really wanted to read this comment because uh, Jesus said, my people die from a lack of knowledge. So he wants you to discern from now on who you get with. And if it's too late and you want to fight for this relationship, if you if you feel like that they can change, you got to battle in the spirit, not in the physical realm by binding these evil spirits and praying for your narcissist or your spouse. So I hope this helps somebody. Thank you again. I'm going to read all the comments on PayPal on Thursdays, I think. Again, ask me any question on there. I would love to help you guys out. And thank you for liking and subscribing. Uh, it's good to be back. I love this. I love that I was give, given a green light to do this again. And it was because of you guys, you guys that God cares for. This is the reason why I'm back doing narcology. You guys be blessed. I love you guys. Be blessed.